Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I am the pixelated incarnation of some guy. And thank you very much for choosing to watch Overanalyzed Adventures. Now I'm here today to keep on keeping on with the overanalysis of every single last one of Wadget Eye's games. We're on to game number four now. Emerald City Confidential. Originally released on February 19th, 2009. Emerald City Confidential is the byproduct of a deal inked in 2008 between Play First and Wadget Eye Games. You may have heard of Play First before. They made those Diner Dash games. And hopefully you heard of Wadget Eye Games before. But yeah, they didn't make the Diner Dash games. But nevertheless, Emerald City Confidential is a very strange and peculiar game. At least from a design standpoint. Now it's about a private investigator named Petra who's privately investigating things in the magical wonderful world of Oz. And it's also a strange hybrid between casual point of click and traditional adventure game. It's it's a bit like a hidden object game, and just without any of those pesky hidden object scenes. It's a strange forelay for Wadget Eye Games into the world of casual game development, and it's a game that plays like, well, no other game that I can think of. But then again, I'm such a hardcore gamer, I don't know anything about the casual market. <laughs> don't look at any of my hidden object game reviews. But the point still stands, it's an odd game. And even beyond the game itself, there's another couple of peculiar things about this title. For starters, Emerald City Confidential is the first and only game as of this recording that Wadget Eye released that was not made using the Adventure Game Studio, but rather this game was developed using Play First Playground SDK. And I know this is going to sound a little bit peculiar, but Emerald City Confidential marks the very first time that Dave Gilbert was paid money to make a game. I know that it sounds absurd, after all, Dave Gilbert had released three games by the time of Emerald City Confidential, but those were all self-financed jobs. Play First is the one who ponied up the funds to make this game. They paid for the artist, the distribution, the everything. Hell, I'm pretty sure Dave Gilbert was probably drawing a salary. So guys, with all that said, do you want to see the type of game that Dave Gilbert makes with other people's money? Fun fact, in 2014, Play First was acquired by Goo Games after failing to make waves in the freemium industry. <laughs> Oh, and here's another fun fact. That's the very first time the Wedged Eye Game logo has ever winked at me. Oh, it's gotten so sassy now that it's in the casual industry. But enough about corporate logos and imagery. Let's get into the game now. The Warehouse District. Hello, heroine. That's Petra right there. Petra P.I. I don't know what her last name is. I'm not sure if the game ever gives her one. But any hoot, she's our hero. And she also has rather peculiar posture. At least for my money. I mean, she always looks so damn stern. The lady needs to loosen up a little. And also, I think the voice actress sounds a little bit flat in her performance. It's always the same monotone delivery throughout this game. I know, we're not even 30 seconds in and I already found a couple of things to bitch about. So anyway, our heroine's apparently been investigating this case for a couple of months, and now things are coming to a head at last. That's right, Lion. I've almost got you. I've got a folder of documents that prove all of your crimes. I just need to get into that warehouse and see what you've been up to. She's talking about the cowardly lion of, you know, the Wizard of Oz fame. He's apparently up to some shenanigans now. I don't know what, the game's just started, so I have no idea what's going on. But good thing a mandatory tutorial pops up and a bunch of sounds and lights and whiz bangs keep my attention because yes, this is a casual game and yeah, it's really gonna hold your hand, especially early on. Hmm, I had no idea game I needed to get into the warehouse. Perhaps I'll use this crowbar and try to get the door open. What the? Poppy gas. The oldest trick in the book. If I was awake, I might have felt ashamed. Well, if you're not awake, then how are you able to communicate with us? It's really peculiar, this line. Maybe it's a reference that I'm just not getting. Or maybe Dave Gilbert wants to mess with my sense of time, because I'm not sure if this game's taking place in past tense, or if she's just a narrator, or hell, maybe she's an omnipresent deity that's just messing around with everyone. Oh. Yeah, she may not be a god. After all, she can't get off this bridge that she's dangling from. Though it makes you wonder why the hell they're hanging her from a bridge. But oh well, 
I guess who shows up, folks? So, you're awake at last. You're lucky I'm feeling generous, or I'd charge you for my time. Lion! So I'm wondering, is the lion the one who tied her to the bridge? And then did he walk off screen and just wait for her to start crying for help so he can make a dramatic entrance? Was he like smoking a cigarette off screen just saying, come on, wake up already, wake up already. Guilty as charged. Guilty is right! I've got enough evidence to put you away for life! Yeah, Lion, we're gonna lock you away for unspecified crimes that the game never really goes into detail about. I'm serious. I have no idea why the Lion's supposed to be such a bad dude. I can only imagine it's typical shady lawyer stuff. You wouldn't believe the amount of evidence I've got against you. You mean the evidence that was in your coat pocket? What? Hey, where did it go? Can I hear that again? When did it go? Is it just me, or does it sound like she's saying, when did it go? And also, Petra seems incredibly naive. She's surprised they bothered to search her before they suspended her from a bridge. Anyway, I wish I could stay in chat, but I must be off. Do give my regards to the ground. So the lion's a pretty sly customer. He's destroyed all the evidence against him and burned down the warehouse we were trying to check out. But he's apparently not much of a murderer. He's just gonna leave us here. Although, it would be a lot easier to kill us, especially at this perilous point in the game. But then again, we're only five minutes in, so as you can imagine, we're gonna get out of this one pretty miraculously. Hey, watch it, lady. I'm flying here. Saved by the gum transit system. How embarrassing. How exactly is that embarrassing, Petra? Would you have rather died than have been caught being saved by a gump? Are you a gumpist? Yeah, sorry. You available? Yeah, the meat is running. Where do you want to go? To where all the gumps sound like they from New York. Yeah, that's my best attempt at a New York accent. I do apologize. But hey, here's the intro. Let's just fly right past it. Stupid lion. That's the fifth time he's nearly killed me. I don't know if the lion's pathetic or if he's just taking pity on Petra, but come on, five attempted murders and none of them took? Lion, you should be doing better than that. So Petra pouts and goes on about how she can't take the lion down, even though she really wants to because he's committing unspecified crimes that the game will never go into details about. But then after that little petty pout, we get some typical Dave Gilbert style adventure gaming. But first, we have to deal with a bunch of pop-ups exploding in our face. Oh god, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. If I uncover anything interesting or worthwhile, I'll write it down. Alright folks, we got the notepad! Woohoo! Yeah, that's pretty much what you can expect in a Dave Gilbert adventure game. You are gonna be taking some notes. Hear that, Emerald City? I'm packing a new notebook and I'm not afraid to use it. I wonder if Dave Gilbert has stock in a notepad manufacturer. But anyway, after making a joyous cry because we have a notebook, someone shows up to talk to us. Thank you. You're Petra. And you appear to have a broken neck. That's what it says on the door. What can I do for you, Miss... D. You can call me D. So anyway, D wants to hire us to find her missing fiancé. Turns out he just got back into town and hasn't spoken to her. So that's kind of a big deal, ooh. And oh yeah, she's also keeping tabs on him by using a magical device. Which, as Petra puts it... Magic device? Those are illegal. I have a magic license. I'm not breaking any law. My guys, is it just me or do these voice actresses need a cup of coffee? Come on, have some pep, people! But anyway, Dee's fiancé is named Azul, and she gonna pay us a crap ton of money to find him. So naturally, we gonna take the case, because like all P.I.s and works of fiction, we always live a paycheck to paycheck and are on the brink of poverty constantly. And only to make things ever so more nor, Petra's worried that this case sounds too good to be true. Because yeah, she's living the cliched nor dream. What's her angle? The warning signs whirl around me like a tornado, but the money is too good to pass up. Wait a minute. Tornado. I wonder... It turns out our poor friend who needs a neck brace is Dorothy, you know, from the Wizard of Oz. Follow the yellow brick road, da-da-da-da, Julie Garland, and all that. I knew it. Dorothy Gale. 
The bright-eyed little girl who blew her way into Oz over 40 years ago. What is she doing here? Isn't she an honorary princess? Damn, she's looking good for at least being in her early 40s. So Petra's working for Dorothy now. Obviously, this makes her really think that this case is more than it seems. But this is also a Norse story, so of course this case is going to be more than it seems. So Petra, motivated by the money in her pocket, begins the investigation proper now. Of all the soldiers to be on duty, TikTok is the second to last one I want to see. My god, the neurometer's going through the roof. As you'd expect, Petra has some backstory with TikTok that we'll discover later, and of course it'll be also dark and nori. But fortunately for us, and despite their unknown backstory, TikTok's gonna help us out. This is a photograph of Ansel. Do you recognize him? Affirmative. He did not use the name Ansel when he entered the city. He will have to report back to me and tell the truth in order to avoid prosecution. Maybe I can tell him for you. What was his destination? His destination was registered as 43 Granetta Lane, Emerald City. Well, TikTok proved to be pretty damn helpful. We learned a couple of vital things. Thing number one, Amzol's in the city. Thing number two, we know where he went. So it should just be a simple matter of strolling up to that address and finding him. Of course it's not going to be that easy. We got an ass in our way. Hey. Hey, does Betsy Bobbins live here? Who wants to know? Someone who's just trying to advance the plot. And as you can imagine, this donk at doorman's not gonna let us in. But he does conveniently tell us that he allows people in with gifts for Miss Bobbins. So naturally, we're gonna need to find a gift for her. Wow, spoiler munch game? Jeez. Yeah, this is where the casual part of this casual point-and-click adventure game hybrid comes into play. And no, there is no way of turning it off. So I guess I should do what the game says and go buy some damn flowers for this lady. Oh dear me, it's our arch rival, the lion. And he's going into the exact same location that I want to go into. I wonder if I need to do anything clever here or just walk right on in. Yeah, I'm just walking right on in. And that, as we say, is that. You mean it? They won't bother me again? Not anymore. They decided to take a long vacation. Yeah, I think the lion just admitted to murdering some people. So I guess he is a legitimate villain, but not a very smart one, because he's just airing out all of his business stuff in front of us. You'll get your money. I'm counting on it, Scraps. Contact my office. My, my. You do turn up in the strangest places. Does a lion not have any peripheral vision? Just wondering, he seems surprised that we're there. Lion? She remembers me. Don't be a stranger. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. And don't let the voice acting have these long pauses. So anyway, we need to talk to Scraps now, this living quilt magical creature thing in front of us that talks kind of bizarrely. It's like she bipolar or something, and her replies are both yes and no at the same time. It's very confusing. But hey, at least she's got some flowers for us. Give me a bouquet of blue flowers and... Red flowers. What a horrible selection. Or do I mean beautiful? Either way, coming right up. Thanks. So now we got the flowers to deliver to the ass so we can talk to that lady who was talking to that guy who's the fiancé of the lady from the Wizard of Oz. You get all that? And oh yeah, the color choice does matter. And it's arguably one of the stronger puzzles in the game because it requires you to think and listen to what everyone's telling you about this lady who you want to visit. I have a delivery for Betsy. You do, huh? Well, let's see it. Yeah, Betsy will like those. Go on in. Ooh, look at the production values that Play First Money buys. A bunch of white flowers that are supposed to be colored. Oh well, we can go on in and talk to Mrs. Bobbins now. Are you Betsy Bobbins? Uh-huh. Are those flowers? What is it with the voice acting and the posture of these characters? It's really getting to me because it's only a hair bit annoying. I'm looking for a man named Ansel. What? He missing us something? As you can imagine, Miss Borderline Baby Talker here was hooking up with Amsel, but she doesn't know where he's at now because she called the cops on him a couple days ago when he showed up randomly because, I don't know, they were fighting or whatever. But yeah, she has no idea where Amsel is now. However, she does give us the lead that he did work for the university, so like in old Nora games, we're going to follow up on every lead no matter how insignificant it seems. <laughs> Go. It was a small one. Still, 
It was worth checking out. Hmm. I don't know if it's a good idea or not to acknowledge that you have a paper-thin logical reason for why we're going to where we're going, but hey, we're going there regardless. But before we set off for the university, Miss D has to give us one more vital bit of information, and then we need never speak to her or see her again. What happened when the guard showed up? He ran away, the loser. Did the guard catch him? I don't know. Why don't you ask the guard? Maybe I will. Which guard was it? Ginger. Ginger? A feeling of cold dread creeps up my spine. I hadn't seen Ginger for years, and I wanted to keep it that way. Jeez, game, come to the surface. You're going to drown under all this gnore. So yeah, obviously Petra's got some history with Ginger. Some dark, shady, gnore-esque history. So let's go find her by talking to TikTok, who tells us, hey, she's by the docks. So hell, let's go there. Well, hopefully it's pretty clear that we need to speak to Ginger now. Hey, General. Still picking on the downtrodden? Petra, what rock did you crawl out from under? Nice to see you, too. I'm busy, Petra. Run along. So Ginger isn't gonna talk to us because she hates us for reasons that will be explained soon enough. But at least we can get her to open up and speak to us. We just gotta find this object down by the dock and show it to her. Yeah, all we need is this object, and all of a sudden she's like, Hey, sailors, you can go free, just don't leave town. So now we can talk to her. I'm sure she'll be all warm and friendly towards us. Petra, why are you here? And who asked you to interrupt my investigation? Just being a concerned citizen, General. You stop being concerned the day you quit the Royal Guard! What a twist. You see, Petra used to be a cop slash military officer in the land of Oz. But she quit for some mysterious reason. You know why I left. Yeah, I do. How is your brother doing anyway? <gasps> Petra left the guard because of her brother. Oh no, what happened with her brother? I wonder if we're gonna have to wait until later on in the story for it to be revealed that her brother went missing and we have no idea what happened to him until the very end of the game. <gasps> Oh god, spoiler alert. But getting back to the present, we need to get Ginger to tell us what happened to Azul, so obviously we're going to have to bribe her. I know corrupt cops, missing family members, mysterious pasts, my god, the neurometer's just off the charts. Here's 20 emeralds. What time is it? You're lucky it's a slow night. You can ask whatever you want, but it doesn't mean I'll answer. Yeah, I know I said it before, but I'll say it again. What's up with all the long pauses in this game? Is stuff like being loaded in? That's a genuine question, I don't know. So anyway, the general's not too helpful. All she tells us is that, hey, Azul's like a smuggler, and was trying to hide stuff at Betsy's place, which is why she called the cops. And yeah, we don't know where she is either, so go leave now and head off to the university to follow up on that faint little lead. I keep calling that guy like three different names, don't I? I have no idea, it's just like my brain cannot comprehend that word, it does not make any sense. But hey, we're here at the university, and we're gonna talk to a cricket, because that's what you do when you're at a university in the land of Oz. So this is what education looks like. Can't say I'm impressed. And I can't say that this cricket dude's gonna be all that helpful for us. I am Professor H.M. Wogglebug, T.E., at your service. So how about you service us by bringing out the character that's going to advance the plot for us? I don't see why not. Cutter, come out here! Yes, Professor? This young lady would like to ask you a few questions. So this well-voice acted gentleman right here hired Ansel to go on expeditions across the land of Oz for him to find precious artifacts so he could put them in the university and study them and all that science-y learning stuff. So naturally, once we tell him for no good reason that Ansel's back in town, he naturally wants us to find him for the university because you know those precious artifacts aren't going to find themselves. Well then, what if I also hired you to find him? Then you can tell me what you uncover, yes? Technically, he was right, but D's 700 emeralds bought a lot of silence. Tell you what, if you can match my client's price, then I'll share the information with you. 
But unfortunately, he can't do that because he's a poor university professor guy. But what he can do is give us access to the knowledge machine. That's right, it's like a vending machine of knowledge that we're going to have to be using to look up stuff. Kind of like every other Dave Gilbert adventure game. So anyway, after exhaustedly reading through a bunch of stuff, our heroine's going nowhere. Just nothing but loose ends and dead ends. So she's gonna go back to her office and, well, try to recoup. <clears throat> oh, hello. Yes, indeed, she's a sailor girl from earlier. And it turns out her ship blew up down by the docks and now her and her captain, who's like her older brother, are being accused of being magic users. And that's a big deal considering that magic's illegal. So obviously, we're going to take on the case and try to clear their name because she mentioned brother. And we like a sucker for anyone that talks about a brother. Can you find out what really happened, please? We can always get another ship, but I can't replace Bill. He's like a big brother. Brother. Why did she have to use that word? All right, Trot. I'll look into it. So apparently our heroine's kryptonite is the word brother. So now we got another thing to investigate. The mystery of the magical ship explosion. On top of finding that other guy. Hopefully these two investigations will have no overlap at all, because that would just be too convenient. So, will the two investigations lead into one big investigation that will uncover some dark, deep secrets about the land of Oz? Find out next time on Overanalyzed Adventures! Yeah, that was me trying to do a Noresque ending. So hey guys, that does it for part one of the overanalysis of Emerald City Confidential. I'll be back with part two of three very soon.